there. Good morning. You tune into ET now. This is Bayan Asal now with Michelle D'Souza. Along with me today, I have Samit Sarkar. A very good morning to you, uh, Samit. Turned out to be a very bright morning for the benchmark indices. Yes, but then it didn't. Yeah, exactly. It did not uh, live up to that. As you can see it on the bottom of the screen, 200 over 250 points off from the day's highest point. That is only the picture coming in for the Nifty as of now. You also have uh, Sensex that has uh, lost steam off the day's highest point. Midcap index as well. All of them have it is all of these gains remember when we opened up for trading session we hit fresh record high levels you had nifty that surpassed the 22600 mark but yes we could not sustain that mark you had nifty mid cap index that scaled 50000 for the first time ever that one also losing all of its um, gains uh, seeing a decline in excess of a percent from the day's highest point so not a great picture Coming in for the benchmark indices, but it's surprising to see, Samit, that the advanced decline ratio on the NSE and the BSE right now is very much tilted in the favor of gainers. So let's see which side of the market actually the benchmark indices uh, tilts through the course of the day. Talking about the list of gainers, then you have a handful of gainers today. You have NTPC that is the top gainer on the Nifty, two and a half percent up to coming in for NTPC. HDFC Bank better than expected. Q4 uh, business update coming. In for HDFC Bank, the stock is trading higher in excess of 2%. You have DV's Laboratories, remember the double upgrade that came in for the counter yesterday. Today as well, the stock is uh, seeing good gains of about a percent. Coal India, Access Bank are the other set of gainers. While on the flip side, it is Sun Pharma that's taking it a bit easy. 1.8% downtick for Sun Pharma. Indusind Bank down 1.8%. ONG, Grasim, Hero Motor Corp, Sipla, all of them declining in trade. In fact, you have Reliance Industries that's seen a decline of about 1.3% right now. So that's also putting actually the weight on the Nifty and dragging the Nifty low. We are unable to sustain those positive levels. Talking of the sectoral indices, then uh, in the sector uh, sector front, you have the private banks that are holding on to gains. You have power index that's holding on to gains, but it's the pharma, oil and gas, auto that are seeing very de uh, deep cuts as of now. So that's the way how the markets are looking like at this point in time, uh, Samit. But you know that you are heading towards the Q4 earnings season when you have all the Q updates coming in, isn't it? Well, yes, and it's the banking sector which is actually in focus. We saw HDFC Bank come out with its numbers and not only HDFC Bank, mm -hmm. it's RBL Bank, uh, AU Small Finance Bank and what key uh, trend that we are seeing is that the focus has shifted more towards increasing deposits and if you see the Q on Q growth in deposits, they have been stellar. And uh, we have Ashesha joining us to give us and put uh, this, all the Q4 updates that have come in for banks into perspective. Well, yes, let's start with the largest private sector bank, then HDFC Bank. As you mentioned, the stock is up nearly 2%. Deposits have seen a solid growth of 7.2% on a sequential basis. Advances, meanwhile, have seen an uptick of about 1.6% on a sequential basis. The stock is gaining 2 odd percent. Moving on to Suryode Small Finance Bank, then the stock is soaring in trade today, 12 to 13% higher than last time I checked. Gross advances have seen a solid uptick of 41% on a year on year basis, with deposit growth at about 50%. Ratio 2 has improved by about 160 basis points to 20.1%. Moving on to AU Small Finance Bank, then this counter is also gaining nearly 5 odd percent on the back of solid data for the quarter gone by. Deposit growth of 26% YOI, advances growth of about 25% on a year on year basis, and CASA ratio continues to remain stable at about 33% sequentially. RBL Bank also reporting strong set of operational data. The stock was up nearly 2 to 3 odd percent. Advances 20% YOI. Deposits also reported strong growth on a year-on-year -year basis. They've grown by about 22% on a year-on-year -year basis. Let's also talk about the NBFC space then. And in that first up, LNT Finance, it is rather reported in line set of operational data for the quarter gone with retail disbursements at about 15,000 crores, which is up 33% on a year-on-year -year basis, and retail loans at the End of fourth quarter stood at about 80,000 crores, which is up 30% on a year on year basis. And lastly, Poonawala FinCorp, it is off the highest point, but despite that, gaining nearly half uh, to one odd percent after total disbursements in fourth quarter grew by about 52% on a year on year basis and 11% on a sequential basis. And AUS has seen a solid growth of 50% YOI. So strong operational data from Poonawala FinCorp as well. All right, strong operational. It's coming in at least for the financial space. Thank you so much, Ashesha, for putting that into context. So not just banks, you also had the NBFCs also come out with their number. But let's bring on board our guest for today. We have Kush Bora as well as Vivek 
Parva joining us on the show to take us through what one should do when it comes to the entire financial space. Very good morning to you, Kush, as well as Vivek. Thank you so much for joining us on ET9. Kush, let me actually come to you for a, a change first. And uh, I know the financial space is pretty vast, especially when you talk about banks, you talk about MBFCs, and then when you talk about banks, there's private sector banks, there's uh, PSU banks. But uh, if you have to narrow it down, have you, uh, do you have your favorites? And please don't tell me HDFC Bank in that lot. Hi, Vivek. Uh, you know, good to be here. Well, and I mean, you, you've made it a little difficult for me by ruling out HDFC or other easy, actually. You know, that was the easiest of the, uh, easiest of the lot. But, you know, I'll tell you what. Have a stock-specific approach. Have a bottom-up kind of an approach rather than, you know, going, you know, uh, as you said, you know, into the whole uh, uh, jargons, which is you know, PSU, private, NBFC, you know. So all of that, I would rather be, uh, you know, stock-specific, uh, stock bottom-up. So we've spoken about geo financial quite regularly. HDF Bank, uh, you know, uh, despite you, uh, you know, uh, telling me not to, uh, does remain, you know, one of the uh, favorites here from here on. But we're also looking at some of the other names. Now, if you look at the likes of Punawala Fincourt, the stock doesn't really have that kind of a momentum. But the kind of stability it's showing and the, you know, up move that it is showing, it's surely a candidate for, uh, you know, investing from a medium to a long term perspective. Then within the banks, you know, you've, you've got the likes of uh, PNB and Union Bank. So I have some of these names, uh, you know, just as a disclosure, we've recommended some of these to our clients also as a part of our advice. But Union Bank, PNB, Geo Financial, Punawala, these are some of the stocks that I'll have on my radar. And there is obviously the list of stocks that you must avoid, uh, that, you know, uh, the, the likes of PEL and IDSC First Bank. So some of these are a very clear avoid for us, but it's heartening to see the HP, uh, the uh, bank nifty outperforming and, you know, playing that catch-up rally uh, in, in the market. I think good days are here if the bank and at least sustains, if not even, you know, moves from here on. Uh, well, uh, Vic, how are you seeing the Q4 updates that have come in for banks? Uh, I guess the focus has been much more on increasing deposits because post Q3, the concern was on uh, no, banks not being able to get the cheap deposits. But now it seems that the deposit growth has been stellar for all the banks. How are you reading into this Q4 updates? Now, see, even, uh, even if you say that... Uh, don't talk about your favorite. Uh, Kush and me cannot uh, resist about it. And uh, since the stock was below 1400, even I was uh, screaming that please buy AFC Bank. And I'll tell you below 1400 levels. In fact, previous show also we had a discussion and I was saying that HDFC Bank looks the most uh, interesting stock right now. And uh, you see, what I have been telling my clients is, yes, there are issues and these issues can continue for next three, four quarters. But uh, at 1400 levels, if you buy HDFC Bank and uh, you just wait for say two years and if it gives you even 2000 price you're talking about 21 22 percent cagr which is very good return out of a large cap and you don't lose your sleep also so this was the uh, bet and i'll tell you if you uh we would have bought at least few truckloads of uh, hdb bank uh, at around uh, 1400 levels so that remains still uh, uh still the best bet and uh among uh, psu banks i sbi uh needs a look please have a look at it uh, still below 10 PE and uh, it, it is no way inferior to HDFC or ICAC or uh, Indus Indoor Access. It is equally good and uh, after whatever the cleanup has been happening in PSU banks, I think SBI is something which can, uh, uh, I shouldn't say double, but yeah, I feel if, if things go the way they are, it should be at least a 1200 rupees stock. So SBI remains the second best pick. Right, so yes, despite saying no HDFC Bank, HDFC Bank by default makes the list, isn't it? So it's HDFC Bank, SBI, uh, the top favourite. But just marking what's flashing at the bottom of your screen, you have the rupee that has in fact fallen to a record low versus the dollar. And this, despite the dollar index actually falling in overnight, isn't it? Uh, but uh, yes, just it's not only rupee, you have other currencies as well that are inching low when you compare them to uh, the dollar. Right now, you have the rupee at a record low. On that note, we slip into a break. When we come back, we'll take care of the stock queries. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. And uh, this is a show where we get you answers for all of your stock-related query. As you can see on your screen, uh, the number is flashing on the top of your screen. Do remember, each time you write to us, mention your name, the stock that you're looking to invest in, mention that name as well, along with that, the buy price, the quantity, and the time horizon.
then uh, in case that you have purchased the stock and we will take that to our experts and talking about our experts today we have Kush Bora as well as Vivek Karva joining us on the show and a short while ago on the BNSN lens we did discuss about the banks in detail uh, but uh, let's start taking all the stock related queries then and the first one that I have is coming from Subramaniam who's writing to us from Chennai and Subramaniam has Spark uh, which he's bought at levels of 402 rupees per share a few years ago he wants to know what's the uh, sort of an outlook on that one can he get more returns or decent returns this one it is Spark it is uh, Sun Pharma advanced as the uh, stock uh, what's your take on this uh, uh, Vivek given the that he's been holding Spark for a couple of years and the level is 402 rupees per share. What should he do now? No, yeah. Okay, it is Spark. Uh, you are talking about Park Hotels. No, 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 uh, it is Spark. It is Pharma Advanced. Okay, okay. Uh, see, again, uh, stock has been underperforming, recovered a bit uh, in recent past. Overall, uh, Pharma as a whole has been underperforming. At these levels, I would uh, ask him to just uh, hold it on. The company has really reduced uh, debt a lot, and uh, going forward, uh, there are there are few molecules which are under uh, progress. It's even one gets success, I think this stock should really do well. So the downside uh, looks limited. Yes, you've got to show patience uh, if you're going to hold it. So just hold it. Uh, this next one is coming in uh, from Alok, who's writing to us from Delhi, and a couple of stocks that he has in his portfolio actually. Uh, Kush, I'll take it to you because he's asking for the month of April alone. Where uh, is the stock headed? One is 17,000 shares of Bank of Maharashtra, at a price of around 50 rupees per share. And the other one is SpiceJet, about 10,000 shares at a price of 61 rupees per share. He wants to know, are there any scope of these counters uh, making further gains in the month of April alone? Well, uh, Cheryl, if I may, I'll uh, just give a quick update on Spark and I'll tell you why I'm interested. It's, it's a coincidence just today, this morning, you know, we've received, you know, we've released a call on uh, Spark as a part of our advisory service. Just a quick update. The stock is completing its ending bottom pattern near the uh, 418, 420 mark. I think once that is, the stock will head to, uh, you know, 450 plus kind of levels and quite bullish on this. So just a quick word on that since it, it was a query, uh, you know, just before. Uh, as far as Bank of Maharashtra goes, in fact, very similar pattern here too. The stock is coming close to the resistance level of 69. But I think, you know, with the kind of revival that we've seen across the banking space, I think this stock has a potential to go to 72 and then 75 levels, you know, maybe not just in the month of April, perhaps, you know, might spill over to May as well. But, you know, a constructive view on Bank of Maharashtra. As far as spice jet goes, well, you know, strictly technically speaking, the stock did actually see a bit of a rebound. But now there is a supply zone close to the 65, 67 zones. So perhaps, you know, exit partially, uh, you know, at the current levels. And if the stock does move higher, then, you know, 72 is your next level where you should exit the stock. Uh, Spicejet, my suggestion would be to keep exiting as the stock just moves higher. Uh, take coming on Bank of Maharashtra, Spicejet, as well as Spark uh, for our viewers. Okay, uh, Amit is writing to us from Mumbai. And he has 600 shares of Tata Steel, which he's purchased at the levels of 115 rupees per share. Should he stay put with Tata Steel or look to exit right now? What's your take coming in on this particular counter? Making profits, but yes, dependent on the commodity cycle globally. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but the kind of moves that we've seen, they've been extremely encouraging. And, uh, you know, I think the buying price is fairly low. He's sitting on a neat profit. It'll not be a bad idea to book 50 profit here. So a partial, uh, you know, a book profit is the suggestion. The stock is also seeing mild negative divergences, which do suggest that, you know, this could come in for a round of profit booking or consolidation in the days to come. But on the whole, the trajectory is upwards. So uh, book the, you know, book 50%, hold the rest with a trailing stop loss of 155. The stock has all the steam and the legs to move to 170 and higher. Uh, this one is coming from Snigda Das, who's writing to us from Delhi, and she's written to us time and again. Uh, Vivek haven't been able to take a query, but today she's asking about NTPC. Does it make sense to enter NTPC right now for a period of around two years, or maybe even for more than two years? Do you think that there is more scope of NTPC moving or uh, rallying, given the fact that you saw all the power counters, all the power PSUs also see a good up move? Uh, see, if it is two years, I would uh, give a hold. Now, reasons for that being, yes, uh, you got to be sure that the way it has performed uh, in past, it might not do the same way because uh, my enterprise was at around 160, 170. Now at 360, I would, wouldn't be, uh, the stock wouldn't be moving that uh, speed, with that speed. But what I feel is the way companies uh, investing in hydrogen, 
the way company is doing joint ventures with other companies and the way power uh, consumption is going to say even double in the uh, next five six years uh, the stock should really do well uh, in fact uh, if you look at uh, reports three four days back uh, it already says that the tamil nadu where i'm uh, staying uh, i'm here right now the consumption of power is at all time high right now so this is going to be the uh, trend going future so stock is going to re do really well if it is two years time horizon definitely a hope well the next query is coming in from uh, mr ramarao from hyderabad and he's holding around 6000 shares of idfc bank bought at a price of 77.55 for the past two months uh kush uh, how do you look IDFC uh, first bank on a uh, technical charts uh, is it con should he continue to hold or should he exit this counter sure hi somit uh, well you know just in the opening commentary you know this was one of the names that mentioned uh, you know is on our avoid list uh, there has been you know a bounce in the last couple of sessions that you see but uh, the kind of uh, medium term pressure that the stock is witnessing i'm afraid there will be selling pressure at every rise you know so at levels of 80 Uh, once that is taken out, perhaps even at 84, and then there is a, the 200-day uh, moving average pressure at 86. So uh, the point being that you know there will continue to be resistances at uh, these certain levels as the stock moves higher. My suggestion would be to keep exiting at every rise and you know keep a tight trailing stop loss. Uh, uh, as against this, you know there are the likes of PNB and Union Bank that have been doing well. So not be a bad idea to switch to those. All right, this is. Ashwin, this one is for you, Vivek, and he is giving you three options, uh, and uh, you have to select out of those three which one do you think uh, in the next three, uh, three years is looks good, uh, and if the valuations are stretched, so what should he do on in these counters? One is Dixon Tech, the other one is Sirma SGS, and the other one is Keynes. For the next three years, out of these three, which one do you think looks good, given the fact that all of them have had their fair share of actually rally? Okay, uh, so before going coming to this uh, again, uh, I would like to talk on IDFC First Bank. It because it has registered office in uh, Chennai. <laughs> okay, and uh, the story is like this. Uh, Hindi me there's a story, you know, share aya share. Aya. That is what is happening in IDFC Bank. Last fifteen uh, years, people are trying to project it as uh, next IDFC Bank, but that line is not coming at all. So the day it comes, that day we got to buy. As of now, it would again be avoided, as uh, Kush was mentioning. See, among the EMS uh, space, Dixon. and kings uh, i think dixon should be the best bet uh, the way uh, uh, they are and in fact kings uh, also should be the second uh, best bet sirma has already uh, uh, run up a lot the valuations look really stretched uh, similar story with uh, dixon and kings but yeah if you are looking at uh, three years both the stock look good to me you should uh, surely have some exposure to this ems is going to be a big thing uh, going forward Well, the next query is coming in from uh, Vivek, and it's actually for you, Kush. Uh, he's asking whether it makes sense to uh, buy and hold Praj Industries uh, for the next three to six months. I mean, Vivek could just ping me on uh, social media. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's sitting right across. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> just kidding. That's that's obviously on a much lighter note. Uh, well, see, Praj has shown a fair degree of revival. I think this is coming into uh, you know the resistance band of five fifty, five fifty five. And the momentum indicators are also showing some signs of cool off. So my suggestion here would be, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a fresh addition, then 555 is the level that you have to wait for. If that is taken out, then the stock will see revival. The stock will see momentum. Otherwise, it might just consolidate, you know, in this range for some time. So if it does, then it's perhaps, you know, uh, you know, not a bad idea to move out of this one. So I'll wait for that 555 level for a fresh entry. Otherwise, Praj for me is a book profit candidate. All right then. Uh, this one is coming from Gaurav, who is writing to us from Bangalore. He has hundred shares of LNT that he's purchased at three thousand eight hundred rupees per share. Uh, JSW uh, Steel two hundred shares at the price of eight hundred and seventy eight rupees per share. He wants to know uh, what's the near term outlook on both of these counters. And looking at the uh, kind of buy price, looks like it's a very recent buy for him when it comes to JSW Steel as well as LNT, isn't it, Kush? Oh, absolutely. And you know they're not. At bets per se, it's just that you know the current mm. prices and the kind of profit booking we are seeing, uh, or rather the consolidation I must say are seeing now that we are seeing perhaps mm. could be a bit of a concern. But otherwise, JSW Steel you know is a whole candidate. Here, uh, near term stop comes in at about 8:45 kind of, uh, levels. Larson, I would suggest hold on even if there is any kind of dip that comes into the stock, use those dips to add more. I would say even till the level of uh, you know 3650. 
the stock is you know a buy on dip kind of a candidate from a medium term perspective the stock has all the potential to go to 3580 and then 4000 levels so last is a buy on dip and gsw steel is a hold well uh, next query is from muni rajulu chittur from andhra pradesh and he wants to know whether is it a good uh, time to entry a couple of stocks varun beverages and inox india for long term vivek how do you look at both these counters uh inox india should be a hold uh, particularly because uh, uh the way company is performing i think uh, next 2 uh, 3 years the valuation really looks uh, costly but i feel if you are looking long term next 2 3 years it's a great uh, bet and particularly into industrial uh, gases the stock should continue doing well and uh, varun beverages right now hold the stock is actually doing uh, very well and be- the summer season i think uh, it is this quarter should be good for the stock so both will be good all right uh, there is a query that is coming from uh, sagar and in fact uh, my uh, producer uh, shyanshi did point out that we've been getting a lot of queries on inox india as well so it's not only sarza electronics and technologies that we're getting uh, queries on this time around we have been inox india making to that list but let me talk about uh, strides pharma because this is uh, the query is coming from sagar he wants a combination view he's a term actually viewer of the show so let me uh, actually take this one uh, and uh, he has a uh, uh, strides pharma for the from the levels of about 270 rupees per share he has around 2850 uh, shares of this particular counter making spectacular uh, profits one of the reasons what what he is asking or other stating why he's bought this uh, this counter he's saying technically the stock was sitting at a multi year low support levels so the risk reward seemed favorable so that's one of the reasons why he bought and fundamentally he felt the selling pressure or sorry technically he felt the selling pressure was extremely or completely exhausted uh, so he was expecting a reversal anyways talking about fundamentally he felt that the us gen- seem to be picking up good which became a favorable for indian pharma company so these are his reasons actually he is given why he is bought the counter but now he wants to know about strides pharma what next do you see a target of 1000 plus or so, uh, kush on this counter and for outlook for us pharma and indian pharma companies how does it look going ahead actually vivek uh, first kush to you strides pharma it surpassed those all those levels the reversal seems to be at play 1000 rupees anytime soon Cheryl, first, uh, let me congratulate him. You know, not just on the pick, uh, the fact that he's got such a detailed study and a method in place for buying stocks. Uh, whenever we, uh, you know, do our seminars, webinars, or any uh, such, you know, event, we always recommend having some sort of a method. You know, if not to at least select stocks, uh, you know, to at least reject which one you shouldn't buy. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, he's put in all the uh, angles to, uh, you know, this before he bought this. So kudos to him and. He's being rewarded phenomenally for it. The stock's actually uh, practically uh, gone about three and a half, four times from his buying price. So kudos on that. I think he's absolutely right in spotting the fact that you know the stock was actually um, near multiple lows when he entered. Now, if you see on the monthly chart, the stock is completing a rounding bottom pattern near the 880 level. So I think you know that will be the zone to watch for. But the kind of revival that the stock has seen over the last uh, year, year and a half, I think thousand is very much on the cards. Given that you know his outlook is long term. i think once that is taken out you know don't rule out a move until you know 1250 also so from you know a medium to a long term perspective this is turned out to be a good buy congratulations on that and hold on for levels of 1250 uh, hold on to the counter is what uh, kush has to say and uh, coming to you then vivek what's your take he wants to know the outlook for us pharma business with regards to indian pharma when it comes to the cdmo and biologics uh, and how are you expect the revenue or the margins to shape up for these companies okay i uh, see uh, in fact uh, i am quite bullish on uh, companies doing cmo uh, business particularly uh, uh, there's a reason uh, one of my favorite stock has been uh, pyramid pharma and yet to perform and uh, similar uh, case with strides see what is going to happen uh, in india also as the per capita income keeps uh, moving up the uh, expenditure towards uh, pharma and the way this uh, Uh, focus by the government also is on the uh, uh, say medical uh, space the pharma as a sector should uh, continuously do it. so i am quite bullish after banking and financial services i am bullish on healthcare services which includes pharma as well now coming to strides in particular uh, if you look at last uh, 10 to 12 quarters the company has been doing uh, say reporting losses but last quarter alone december quarter was a profitable uh, quarter uh, majority 
the stake uh, by the promoters is uh, placed right now. But if they continue, if they continue showing profits, I think uh, if there is small uh, trigger, small news that promoters are releasing their stake, the stock should actually, as Push told, uh, touch even twelve hundred levels. So looks good. You should uh, hold it on just because you bought it at uh, low levels. Do not uh, book it out. Just hold it on for thousand. Well, uh, thank you, Vivek, for that. With that, let's. A short break and we'll be back and we'll address more investor queries up welcome back you're watching buy now sell now and eating now let's continue taking all of the stock related queries then and this one is coming from Shri Kishore Shah writing to us from Bihar and he wants to know about Tita Gar uh, really has about 400 shares of this particular counter at the price of 200 5 rupees per share. He is one of those lucky ones who actually bought this one uh, in January 2023. So he wants to know whether he should stay put with this counter for more two years. What's your take on that, Vivek? You think it makes sense that he stays put with this one because he's actually seen the massive part of that rally that all of these uh, uh, rail counters have. See, uh, the focus of the government on the railway sector will continue after the results as well. I mean, election results. Now, uh, be it Titagar uh, Rail or uh, Jupiter Wagons, I think both the stocks continue doing well. And uh, in fact, uh, this is already public news that uh, uh, government is going to make all the trains, uh, AC coaches, even the, uh, uh, say, unreserved ones. So going forward, the scenario looks quite uh, bullish. Company has been uh, delivering very good profits. And uh, the debt level situation of the company also is uh, actually improving uh, quarter on quarter. So definitely a hold. I think it's a long-term uh, structural uh, bet. You shouldn't be looking at it uh, short-term at all. And of course, he's already holding it for long-term. Next query is from Ravi Chandra from Hyderabad. He has bought around 300 shares of Indastars at a price of 304. Uh, Kush, what would be your short-term target, say, for the next two months for Indastars? Well, the stock is, uh, you know, a fair a volatile counter so uh, my suggestion here would be to first have a strict stop loss in, a stop loss in place uh, that comes in at about the uh, 285 kind of zones uh, the stock did make a high uh, close to the 320 mark so that should act as the first target for the april series and you know if and when that is taken out i think we're looking at 335 as the next level but uh, you know if he's got multiple lots and derivatives or if he's got uh, you know uh, shares in uh, equity my suggestion would be to out some at the 320 mark and then hold the rest for uh, 325 and move his uh, stop loss higher. All right. Uh, this was from Zenith Kosser who is writing to us from Ranchi and she has about 200 shares of first source at a price of 212 rupees per share and also wants to know whether it makes sense to go ahead and take the plunge in IOC at these levels. Kush, one first source, what sort of a target are you a bit, uh, envisaging and also IOC makes sense to actually uh, enter the stock now? So, uh, see, as far as first source goes, the stock is now in that uh, zone where, you know, it might perhaps consolidate for some time. We've seen a sharp uh, up move from those 180, 185 kind of levels. So, I think there is consolidation on the cards for uh, first source. So, for me, I will continue to hold uh, first source with a stop loss of 198. The target, the first target here comes in at 208 and, you know, uh, above that, 205 is the level that I'm looking at. IOC, uh, you know, I'm not entirely convinced. You know, there's a lot of chatter around the, uh, you know, entire space. And you've got these stocks, uh, perhaps even, you know, recovering rather smartly. But there hasn't been that kind of momentum, uh, you know, since that uh, late uh, late Jan, early Feb rally that we saw. So for me, IOC is a hold right now. I wouldn't do any fresh allocations towards uh, the entire space. So IOC, uh, I'll just perhaps put on the wait and watch me. Next query is from uh, Mr. V. Murli from Bangalore and it's for you, Vivek. Uh, he wants your recommendation on three stocks. Firstly, it's Rate Gain Travels. Uh, second is Azad Engineering. And the third one is Dynamatic Tech. Uh, would you suggest him to buy all these three? Any preferences in these three companies? See, other two I'm not uh, tracking very, very closely, but I think Rate Gain uh, should be a goal. Uh, this company is into SaaS uh, uh, services and going the stock should really again continue doing well. The way travel industry is also booming, uh, the company is providing uh, travel solutions to aviation and uh, other sectors. So, valuation wise, yes, a little bit stretched. So, you got to give uh, the stock time. It might not uh, outperform in short term, but yeah, medium term, it looks good. 
Right, uh, Kush, this one is coming for you from Shivanshu who is writing to us from Delhi. He has uh, Adani Power, he's purchased, oh sorry, he uh, has DLF. Uh, he wants to know whether DLF is a good buy right now uh, at current market price. And the other one is Adani Power. He already bought the stock at 520 rupees per share when the, the correction has set in the counter. So he wants to know the target for Adani Power and DLF if it's a good bet after the correction that the stock also witnessed. So DLF is a buy. My only concern is that the last days, you know, the stock has been in a bit of a mild downturn and hasn't really halted that fall. And the support comes in at 880 where the uh, 20 DML. So I will wait whether the stock does actually in this fall uh, take support at the 880 mark and then rebound. We are actually quite bullish on the entire realty space, you know, uh, be it developers or, you know, the uh, entire universe and then the stock, uh, stock specific, obviously. But we are quite bullish on this space. So we will look for a buy on kind of an opportunity on DLF but I would wait out for me 880 level is a little crucial if it does take support and re you know, rebound from those levels then I think you know uh, the uh, the up move uh, you know will resume and we will be looking at those 960 uh, levels on the upside once again so wait and watch let the fall stem and then you could you know look to accumulate DLF as far as you know Adani power goes I think uh, you know this is a very good buy the stock actually broken out now my suggestion would be to book profits partially because the sharp run of that the stock has seen there's a possibility you know that the stock could witness a round of profit booking in the coming days so book profit partially hold rest with a stop loss of 615 okay uh next query is from namita and firstly it's for actually both of you uh, uh, for vivek and kush as well she wants to know the short term target for jubilee uh, pharma and also a one-year target uh, uh, for the same company. So, Kush, first, what would be your medium-term target for Jubilant Pharma? So, uh, some of the stocks now, uh, you know, starting to consolidate. Uh, you know, if it does uh, take out the 620 mark, you know, where it's hovering, and you know, that's been the resistance band for the last, I think, you know, a month and a half. Then there is a possibility for the stock to head to those, you know, 655 levels. So that's the near term target that I'm looking at, but that could be, you know, uh, that could perhaps be uh, some time before that, uh, you know, the stock moves to those levels because of the consolidation that we're seeing around 20 mark. For you, she also wants to know whether should she continue to hold, uh, should she continue to hold this counter jubilant pharma uh, for the next three years or invest in any other pharma company that you would suggest? Yes, I think uh, jubilant also looks uh, uh, good. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, as Kush said, it is consolidating at these levels, but uh, uh, going forward, uh, tracks research, again, uh, see, as I said, uh, pharma as a whole looks uh, good. The stock, uh, the sector has been underperforming, and the companies which will uh, really perform at the moment, uh, overall sector improves. So, the scenario in US also should uh, improve pretty fast. So, hold it on, and if you really ask me any alternate, uh, yeah, I... Some time back, I said uh, Rebel Pharma looks good to me for next three years uh, time horizon. So, if you want, you can convert uh, this stock into that as well for uh, at least uh, partial quantity. So, as a disclosure, yes, uh, Piramal is in my personal portfolio. Right, this one is coming in from Reema writing to us from Pune. She has a show clear in which she is holding since the month of January. 200 45 shares at a price of 172 rupees per share. Uh, the stock has done nothing. She wants to know, Kush, what should she do actually? Hold on to it, exit. She wants a short term view. Talking about Ashok Leila in particular, I've uh, actually I've also not heard a bullish stance coming from Kunal also off late when you talk about Ashok Leila as a chart because the stock already had a spectacular run, I think, about, about two years ago or so, right? Or from the last two years. Absolutely. I think, you know, the uh, the high that the stock had made for one, you know, at about those 190 levels was almost almost a year back, I think, you know, uh, somewhere early August, mid-August, you know, kind of time. And ever since, you know, there has been a lot of promise, but that's not been delivered. So that's where I think Ashok Leyland is an exit. The good thing is, you know, the dent in her, uh, you know, holding is not too big. The stock's actually just moved sharply and very close to her uh, buy price. So my suggestion, exit Ashok Leyland. If in this universe, you know, she wants to pick something, then you know, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra and Tata Motors are something from uh, the car maker space that we're looking at, and from uh, you know an ancillary space, Lumax Auto and Femna Auto are the two stocks you know that we are uh, looking at very closely. So maybe you know uh, those are the options you know that uh, you know can be considered uh, you know once you switch from Ashok Leyland. He's coming in from Mr. Sayak Banerjee from Bangalore. Now, he's bullish on the EV space and hence he has invested in three stocks. Servotech, Ratan India and Ward Wizard Innovation. 
Uh, Vivek, should he continue to hold all these three counters because he wants to uh, these companies for the next two to three years? See, when you look at our companies like Bot Wizard and all the see, what what my my feelings is this is an evolving uh, sector right now, and you don't know six months later, one year later, what which companies would stay, which companies would get taken over, and which companies would actually shut down. Uh, the big wigs of the industry like Bajaj and uh, your TBS, Maruti's, all all Tata's, all this are coming into uh, EV. And uh, will such small companies stay for long term? I really have question mark. Even I don't know the answer because this is, as I said, it's an evolving uh, thing. So if you really want to play with uh, EV sector, you should look at stocks like Tata Power. You should look at uh, the bigger place, uh, bigger names than this companies yeah you want to have exposure the board wizard as of now looks good you can have small exposure there but please don't bet uh, big because you don't know about the future right now so um this one is coming for you kush then now uh, we have anu from goodgaon who's got uh two shares of gmm fordler at a price of around 1600 rupees per share she's incurring heavy losses in this one wants to know whether she should continue to hold on to it or look to average it out or exit what's your take coming on gmm Fordler 1600 is a buy price, sharp correction over the last three months at least. Broken record, no averaging, but the stock uh, rebounding. So not a bad idea to uh, you know hold on. Just keep moving the stop losses higher. There is a fair bit of momentum here. The stock crossed a 20-day moving average a couple of sessions back, and now crossing its 50-day moving average uh, plus some of the key resistance zones. You know, like the 1350 level was a resistance. Zone. The stock is trading above that, so there is certainly momentum picking up. Uh, it just might happen that, you know, after such a long wait, uh, you know, the stock actually moved up and perhaps, you know, uh, you end up booking out a little too early. So the way to play this would be to have a trailing stop loss. Uh, the level comes in at 13.10. As the stock keeps moving higher, keep your, uh, you know, trailing stop losses, uh, you know, okay, move your tra uh, trailing stop losses higher. That's how I would play GMM Hodler right now. Otherwise, uh, no averaging, no fresh money to be deployed. The stock actually been in a stigger downturn for a while. This is just a rebound that we're looking at to use this to exit. Uh, well, the next query is from Praveen from Kerala and he uh, has bought Balrampur Chini around 110 shares at a price of 402. Uh, Vivek, should he continue to hold this counter or add more? See, uh, sugar, sugar is not going to be uh, sweet for next 2-3 months until uh, elections are over. And uh, post that, I feel uh, sugar as a whole should start recovering again. Now, uh, stocks like Balram, Purchini and Renuka, this should be the top picks in uh, this segment, particularly because they are the biggest player of ethanol as well. Now, ethanol story is not dying, it is uh, here to stay and the targets of governments are gone, still uh, ambitious. So, what I feel is uh, it's on the lower end, uh, uh, you might again find an uptake. So, uh, please hold it on, uh, but you got to give time of at least six months to this. This one is coming from Manoj. He's writing to us all the way from Qatar and he's actually invested in Reliance Power Kush. 19 rupees is the buy price, 40,000 shares. Should he book profits now or wait for some more time? I think one of those uh, rare investors, or actually, I can't say rare investors because a lot of them have actually gone ahead and put their money in Reliance Power after they saw the sharp rally take place in all of these counters. Now, should he book uh, profits in it? Makes sense, right, Kush? Well, uh, you know. With these uh, these shares, is that you know once they start hitting upper circuit, you don't know when they'll stop. Uh, but the converse is also true. You know, once they start hitting lower circuit, you don't know when it'll stop. Right now, the stock is in that upward trajectory. So uh, the best way would be to uh, you know continue uh, you know holding this with a uh, tight trailing stop loss. It will not be a bad idea to perhaps you know, book partially because you know the stock actually entered overheated territory. Any further up move will only perhaps uh, you know push it further into that overheated territory, and there could be a sharp round of profit booking also around the corner. So book partially and continue to hold the rest with a trailing stop loss of the closing price of the uh, you know previous day. That's how I would uh, you know play Reliance Power at the moment if I have a holding position. What's your take? I'm just like uh, I, I don't know. I just thought I should take your take also on Reliance. Power. Do you concur with uh, what Kush has to say? Uh, he no doubt he's given a technical view on it. Fundamentally, Reliance Power makes sense to stay put with. See again, uh, it's quite fundamentally it's quite tough to stay in the stock. So I would uh, I would just follow the charts in this case. Uh, sometimes you got to keep fundamentals aside. If you look at if you are looking at fundamentals, I think you will not be touching the stock. So that's the clear opinion. 
Well, uh, thank you, Vivek, for that. With that, let's slip into a short break and we'll address more investor queries post that. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now, and Eat Now. Let's continue taking your query. This one is coming from Sunita, who's writing to us from Bangalore. Ramki Infra is the counter that she's invested in. Kush, uh, 650 shares at levels of around 80 rupees per share. Oh no, sorry. 650 is the buy price. Around 80 shares is what she purchased. Wants to know whether she should hold or is it? Well, continue to hold. Uh, they pick out uh, that we're looking, you know, uh, at stock with, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, a volume pickup also. Uh, the stock could resist around the 690 mark. So it'll be a good idea to exit, you know, around those levels, maybe just above her buying price, but, uh, you know, an exit nonetheless around those levels. All right. This one is coming in uh, from uh, Reema, who's writing to us from uh, Mumbai. She wants to know about ESAF Bank, uh, if it makes sense to actually invest in the counter uh, right now for a period of around two years or so. Vivek, any uh, take on this one? Uh, ESAF Bank, ESA, uh, ESAF. Okay, uh, see, overall, uh, my view on small finance banks uh, remains negative. And uh, that would be the main reason I would uh, still give an avoid on this. Uh, the way uh, regulators' eyes are on uh, the way the companies are lending, the NPAs of uh, small finance banks, I, I think uh, we are not seeing the whole picture. So, better to stay away from uh, smaller banks. When you're getting uh, stocks like SBA at uh, 8, 9 PE, why would, uh, really, uh, why would you risk here? this kind of companies so avoid would be there okay another one coming your way then Vivek. this one is coming from neo krishnamurti and he has twelve thousand shares of rec that is purchased at an average cost price of around 87 rupees per share he's been holding on to this counter for a while now uh he wants to know whether uh it there is a potential uh, for this particular counter to go uh, or rise further on uh, see a p expansion as well as uh, the valuations that uh, ireda actually enjoys What's your take coming in on REC? No doubt he's making a healthy set of profits in this one for the fact that he's held on to this counter even when it did absolutely nothing. See, uh, the question is long, but answer would be short. I think I would uh, hold REC and you cannot compare REC with uh, Irida. Irida, I was quite negative when it went about 400 and uh, uh, as expected, the stock has corrected. But REC into power segment, uh, as I was uh, speaking in the beginning of the show, I I am quite bullish on the power. So power is going to be powerful. Please hold on REC even at these rates. All right. Uh, then that was actually indeed a very short answer coming in for uh, REC. But uh, let me take uh, this next question that I have. It's coming in uh, from a viewer, um, uh, Samba Seva Rao. He's writing to us from Vijayawada. 60 shares of JBM Auto, which he's purchased at a price of around uh, 1,650 rupees per share. Electra Green also, he has in his portfolio at a price of 1,640 rupees per share. Uh, Kush, he wants to know whether he can add some more for the long term and the long term for him is 12 months. So, JBM Auto, despite the kind of moves that the auto ancillary pack has seen, hasn't really participated. So, it will not be a bad idea to switch to, uh, you know, a Lumax Auto from here. So, uh, JBM Auto is an exit, uh, you know, for me. Olextra, on the other hand, yes, you can, you know, continue to add, you know, any kind of tip that, uh, you know, we saw in the stock has been absorbed and the stock actually, you know, resumed that, you know, upward journey. So, for me, Olextra is a buy on decline. 2150 is the level that we're looking at as the first target and then 2302, uh, you know, is a very a feasible target for this one. So, Lumax uh, Auto, uh, you know, they can switch into and Olextra Green Tech, they can continue to hold or add further. Well, uh, the next query is from uh, Radha Krishna from Bangalore. He has 50 shares of ASOLS India. I am not sure whether Kush or Vivek, any of you guys have actually looked into this company, ASOLS India? No. Yeah, it looks like an IT company to healthcare services and IT services, but uh, I am not been tracking it. And uh, Kush, have you looked into this counter? Uh, likewise, haven't really heard of it. Well, uh, I'll next query which is from Poonam Anand from Punjab uh, she has 250 shares of TVS supply chain bought at a price of 207 and 39 shares of PCI Express bought at a price of 1245 Vivek should continue to hold both these counters see TCI Express is a good company overall I think you should uh, continue holding it if you are uh, uh, now coming to TVS uh, supply chain see the stock uh, got listed uh, and from uh, then it's underperforming in fact uh, I guess it's below the IPO price even now. 
Uh, but uh, if you look at longer term uh, prospects of the company, this is one company wherein uh, I, I should say is the most asset light company mm -hmm. among the uh, uh, flight and uh, logistics uh, companies. So uh, the payoff happen in uh, future. If you are, if you have opinion of a bit uh, medium term to long term, I think you should uh, continue holding some TV supply chain. It comes from a very good group. Yeah, short term pain, but yeah, long term should be good. All right, let me take this next query then. This one is coming from Chandrasekhar, who is writing to us from Chennai. has uh, HUL 200 shares at the, for the past two years with less than 10% profit. Does it make sense to shift to Tata consumer considering uh, to your prospect or should he expect some reversal to come in for HUL? A very tricky question. Let me take this to you actually, uh, Kush. What should he do with HUL given the fact that it hasn't moved? Everyone was expecting it to move. Uh, we thought ITC is done. Now it will be HUL. But the move hasn't been that much, isn't it? Uh, what should uh, our viewer do now? We'll shift to Tata Consumer, hoping a better uh, gaining prospect? Uh, for sure. Uh, HUL actually does remain you know, an, an exit, uh, given the kind of you know, selling pressure that we've seen. Every kind of revival has turned out to be you know a selling opportunity, even from the oversold territories. You know, the bounce that we saw was more of a dead cat bounce. So not really sure if uh, you know this is uh, this is something that you know anyone would continue to hold. Uh, at least from a near to a midterm perspective. So HUL is an exit. Uh, Tata Consumer is a good pick. The stock has actually done you know rather well, especially if you compare it to the likes of HUL. Uh, the recent dip is turning out to be a buying opportunity. Also, although it's a little too early, even if I'm switching, what I will do is perhaps I'll buy partly here, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent of the quantity. And you know, if the stock does actually keep moving higher from these levels, will I add more? Not on decline. If the stock keeps moving higher, will I add more? Also, it will not be a bad idea to consider ITC. So whatever uh, capital I do take out of uh, HUL, I'll park partly into ITC and then remaining into a Tata Consumer. So that's how I would play it. The next query is from uh, Mayank Saraf from Delhi. He's holding already 1,000 shares of Schneider Electric at a price of 600 rupees. He's asking whether should, uh, should he add more of this counter because he, could, he can hold this uh, for the next two years. Uh, Vivek, uh, what would be your view on Schneider Electric? As a disclosure, I had uh, bought this stock for certain clients at 80 rupees and 80 rupees. And yesterday also one client asked, uh, it has already become uh, 10 times, should we hold on? So I said, we'll sell it about 1000. So that gives the uh, message. Now it's an LNT company uh, into switch gears and uh, and most of the billing uh, which used to happen in LNT has started happening in uh, Schneider. So they have shifted the whole business into Schneider Electric. So superb company. Uh, as I said, the, the money is already 10 times uh, for my client, I feel it should still go to 1000. So continue holding. Uh, did those clients like uh, give you some uh, reward, some ladu, jalebi or anything? Look at the stock price, 80 rupees is what did you say that you bought it, uh, bought it at for them? Below 100. Below 100, oh wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay, he's left me speechless. I have nothing more to say to that, but <laughs> Kush, you want to come in on that? Chip in. Vivek's not mentioned the truckloads that he's bought at 80 levels. He's only mentioned about the, uh, the load that he's bought for clients. So. <laughs> no, I have, I have already already asked uh, clients to send me truckloads of uh, Kingfisher and also by United Breweries. <laughs> also by United Breweries. That's why I was wondering, did you not even uh, tell them about the stock? No, it's, uh, it's good. But yes, uh, I'm sure all the clients are pretty happy about it. Let me just check the producer if we have time up on this edition of buy now sell now if not then let me actually take one uh, one more query okay i can take one more query then let me at least address uh, sachin's query on uh, rajesh exports 12 shares 513 rupees per share kush what should he do with rajesh exports uh, there's a revival underway but uh, you know i think this stock is an exit hasn't really done uh, much at all for investors has destroyed wealth might continue to do so going forward so for me rajesh exports is an exit all right, so that is uh, the take coming in on Rajesh Exports. Uh, of course, you all already know where the party is at uh, this weekend. Definitely, uh, we all will have to head uh, to uh, Chennai, actually, and uh, meet Vivek there. But with that, we are totally out of time on this edition of Buy Now. So thank you so much, Kush, as well as Vivek, for joining us on the show. And with that, viewers, this is Bye from Somit, myself, and the team that put the show together. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now